We are going live in three, two, one. Welcome to the Bruce Williams channel, guys. I want to talk about my favorite watch brand. I've had a viewer reach out and say, Bruce, for the longest time, I know you said Seiko was your favorite brand. And then recently I heard a video where you said Omega is your favorite brand. What is your favorite brand and why? And I think it's a great topic that I want to just kind of go over with you guys today and make the analogy that we do a lot in this hobby from watches to cars. Now I'll tell you something. I love the Ford Mustang. I love American muscle cars. I love the Corvette. I love a host of American muscle cars, both modern and vintage. But I also live in truck country and Jeep country, and I love a good truck. The F-150 Raptor. Oh man, I would love a Raptor. And they're two very different styles of vehicles from different manufacturers. And so I think you can have a favorite brand and maybe it's not necessarily the best suited to your everyday needs. Like I would love a new mid-engined Corvette. That would be awesome. But I live here in Utah where with my family size and age and how frequently we go camping and how much snow we get in the winter, you know, here in the Rocky Mountains, an F-150 is probably a better uh, purchase for my family. So I can love different styles. I can admire a, uh, you know, a Ferrari, an Italian supercar, but I can also admire a Lexus with what the Japanese bring to the game. So I think there's good to be had. I can drive a Ford, but love a Lotus, right? So I think the same could be said with watches. What's best suited to me you know, using and wearing on an everyday basis versus what I love and respect, right? Your favorite watch brand doesn't have to be the brand that makes your grail watch or the brand you wear the most frequently. It doesn't have to, let, actually, let's take Casio for an example. Casio makes G-Shock and G-Shock, I think, if I had to say the best brand in the world, I'd probably say G-Shock or Casio. I love the affordability. I love the design of the square. I think, you know, this 80s design is so on point and so practical and so unbeatable. I know they can get expensive if you're looking at the titanium versions, but man, is a G-Shock square such an enjoyable watch, easy to get, affordable, and won't let you down. Technically, that's probably the best brand out there, but is it the most exciting brand? No. Is it handcrafted like an F.P. Journe or Richard Mill? No. So the best brand doesn't have to be your favorite brand. And you don't necessarily have to own your favorite brand. Like um, I don't own a Glass Huta. And I know a lot of you probably think Glass Huta is your favorite brand with what they bring to the table. And it's hard to argue with that because they do some really amazing stuff handcrafted in the Glass Huta region of Deutschland. So let me get to, to my own examples here. For the longest time, Seiko was my favorite brand. And let me tell you why. I respect Seiko for just the wide spectrum of product that they offer. You can buy a minute repeater from Credor, basically the same company. I know there's big differences from the same brand that offers the SKX, right? You can get a $100 very capable daily driver watch and you can spend thousands on a Grand Seiko. There's just such a wide spectrum and it's all vertically integrated. They make the Lumabrite Loom Comp uh, uh, excuse me, Compound. They uh, do the Spron mainsprings and hairsprings and their mechanical movements. They they do super quartzes. They, they do so much. And they've done really practical, great designs, in-house designs, you know, basically, well, for longer than the 1960s, but I, I think the heyday began in the 1960s and they brought about the quartz crisis. I mean, Seiko is a powerful company and they've done some amazing stuff and I love and respect Seiko, but that's not to say that they don't have warts, that they don't make mistakes and do things that bug me and infuriate me sometimes like uh, quality control issues when it comes to bezel alignment. They just do not care. They do not care about alignment, guys. And we may care, but they don't care. And we might get dust and particulates in our dial. I know that certainly happens. We might get imperfections in our loom, in our markers. I've seen some clunkers. I reviewed a Patty Tuna a couple years ago uh, that was a special edition where Seiko had misspelled edition. 
and I'll drop a picture in it of it. It was quite ridiculous. I even had viewers that questioned whether it was a genuine watch. Like they thought it was a fake out. They thought it was a fake watch because of how egregious that mistake was. But no, that was from an authorized dealer. And Seiko told that authorized dealer, you got to send us back the product. We made a big mistake. We'll get you a new batch. So, you know what? They've done some, they've done some silly things. I know we've been unhappy with them as watch enthusiasts with all the price increases and market adjustments. We've gotten used to decade old pricing in some instances with the Alpinist and the Sarb, you know, um, the SKX, the monster. So we're unhappy with some things, but man, do I respect and love Seiko. And that's why for a long time, they've been my favorite brand and I've owned multiple of them. And sometimes in the collection, I don't have very many or any at all. Like right now, <laughs> don't throw stones at me. I am seiko -less. Now I want to rectify that. I want to buy the new Willard. Uh, I'm just waiting on my authorized dealer to get their stock. But um, yeah, Seiko for the longest time was my favorite brand. Now what changed with that? Well, I switched over to Omega, right? I went from Dodge to Ford, right? I mean, it's just another silly car analogy, but uh, Omega is now my favorite brand. And why? Well, a few months ago, I think maybe six or eight months ago, I reviewed in kind of rapid succession a number of awesome Omega products that really just increased my respect for this brand, the Swatch Group owned brand. And I'm not new to Omega. I had owned multiple um, from modern ones to vintage ones over the years. I'm not new to Omega, but I just had this newfound respect, this level of respect for what they do. Now, when I talk about Omega, there's a few things that I really love. I love the way they marry modern contemporary innovation with retro just history because they have some great history. They have probably the most iconic watch in the world with the best backstory, right? The Speedmaster used in space, in low earth orbit, on the surface of the moon. I know um, uh, some of you get sick of the word iconic in and how many Speedmaster limited editions that are pre that are uh, produced, excuse me. I, I get that, but man, the Speedmaster has some pretty amazing history that I love. I, I love NASA. I love space history. Of course, I love the Speedmaster and it's a great design. Uh, so I, I love the retro elements and I love the modern innovations, the micro adjustment systems, the use of silicon, the anti-magnetic properties, the arabesque finishing for a mass produced watch. It's a very beautiful watch. And Omega seems to be listening to us watch enthusiasts when we say we want to see a movement. We want a free sprung balance. We want a longer power reserve. We want a time zone feature uh, as opposed to a quick set date. We want ceramics, you know, we want all of these different things. And Omega, well, I think they listen and they've been doing a great job. So I reviewed a Globemaster, an Aquaterra, a Planet Ocean, a, a Seamaster. Um, I think those were the ones in rapid order where I'm just like, man, this is a hit. This is a hit. This is a hit. Like, I love what Omega is doing. So right now I'd, I'd probably say Omega is my favorite brand, but here's the thing. It's subject to change. I could start loving Longa. I could start loving, you know, another brand just as easily. Zenith makes some great stuff. IWC, man, their perpetual calendar in precious metal. That thing is amazing value. Um, I mean, amazing complication and design. So my allegiances, I guess you could say they're not extremely faithful. I could change brands in the future. It could be Rolex. It could go back to Seiko. I don't know what's going to happen, but um, I, I'm, I'm just happy to be here in the hobby, be along for the ride and enjoy so many awesome watches. So again, I don't think you have to have your, your favorite brand be the brand that you own or it makes the best watch or makes, you know, the best value retention or something like that, or it has the best status symbol. I want to know what your favorite brand is and, and tell me why it's your favorite brand. Is it because of value retention? Is it because of iconic historic designs? Is it because of modern innovation? I want to know what your favorite brand is and why. And maybe in a couple of weeks, we'll do a follow-up episode where we talk about the common things that come up in the comment section, the common brands, the common reasoning and why. So uh, let me know, guys. Thanks for tuning in today. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.